What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, I had inspiration for a different type of video. I want to talk about some dynasty fantasy football trades from a roster that I have decided to start rebuilding in one of my dynasty fantasy football leagues. Now, obviously, usually when we do these dynasty trade shows and things like that, we are reviewing some of your trades. I just felt inspired to talk about some of the trades that I'm doing, some of the inspiration behind those trades, I guess the strategy behind them as well. Uh, so, hey, look, I have a motto. If you feel like doing a video, if you feel like you want to make a video, that's probably the content that you got to make. So that's the video that you guys are getting today. Hopefully you like it. Um, but without wasting any more time, folks, let's hop right into this team. And let's start talking about some of these dynasty trades. All right, so first and foremost, as we get into this team, I want y'all to see the team that I was working with at the beginning of the season. Now, to give you some feedback, or I guess a, some context for this roster as to what it looked like going into the year, I came in second place uh, the previous season. So I was in the championship game, did not win, came in second place, felt like maybe this was a roster that I could run it back with. Now, obviously the roster was a little bit older. I'm going to pull that up on the screen so you can see it. There were some guys on here like Aaron Jones, Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, uh, Brandon Ayu, Kyler Murray, some of these good pieces. Jay Jalen Hurts even was on this roster. I hit some Tyrone Tracy, some Alexander Madison, some Rashad White, uh, Jordan Addison. There's a lot of pieces here. You can see it. I'm going to leave it up on the screen. Um, but as you can see, throughout the course of the year, one, obviously an older roster that was underperforming. My points for were not as high as they probably should have been. And also, I just had some players that I felt like were going to be some good pieces that were underperforming. Amari Cooper obviously had a very bad start to the year with the Cleveland Browns. He still hasn't even picked it up with Buffalo, but he had a bad start to the year. Brandon Ayuk, obviously a bad start, and then is out for the season with the torn ACL. Kyler Murray, he's been up and down. Even guys like Rashad White and T. Higgins, who you see on this as well, like they had bad starts to the year, not necessarily doing what I needed them to do. So overall, this roster was just underperforming. I gave it about six to eight weeks, I think, for the most part, before I decided to really start blowing it up. And so just looking at the team, looking at how it was performing, it wasn't cutting it, and that is why I decided to blow this up. So you see that roster, you see why I was doing it, uh, but I want to talk about a little bit of these trades i want to talk about some of the stuff uh, that happened and this is in order so like i said this is all the trades that i've made in the last 30 days i started blowing this up i think the first trade was october 3rd and everything has happened since then so really over the last month or so i've made 10 plus trades the first one here is sam darnold for a 2026 first now obviously i am a minnesota vikings fan i love sam darnold i think sam darnold is going to play his way into a starting role next year so in dynasty i actually think he's a very good uh player to still target if you can get him for cheap but this was a price that i was definitely okay giving him up for in a team that has jalen hurts kyler murray and baker mayfield so as you can see it's a 10 team uh league the quarterback is not as important in 10 team as it is in 12 so this was one of those deals where it just made sense i wanted to get liquid uh gave me the ability to score zeros in my lineup while not losing value because that 2026 first is only going to continue gaining value over the course of time and sam darnold he goes and plays for a team that needed some quarterback play and it's actually been a pretty solid trade for both parties so far uh even though when you look at sam darnold and see a first round pick some people are going to be like that's not what i would pay it's worked out well for both of us uh that team that bought sam darnold is now the number one team in the league and sam darnold has played a part in that for him so far so not a bad trade for the first one um but was just trying to get liquid and get rid of some of the extra qb play now the second trade here i did move off of xavier worthy and xavier worthy is a young wide receiver that i drafted at that 109 because like i said i came in second place ended up getting worthy uh uh, with that 109 i decided to re-roll the dice man I, I didn't love what i saw out of worthy um he he feels very boom bust i had higher hopes for him he just hadn't been meeting the expectations and it's a short window i think when you're looking at worthy and saying like you made that judgment very quickly you know eight weeks of a sample size i'm okay re-rolling the dice now that 2025 first it is going to be a late one so it's probably in the same range 108 109 110 type of range uh here in this year's class but that 2025 second that i received is almost as good of a lock for the 201 as possible uh, the team right now is like 0-16 or something like that. We have a league median. So he is uh, basically giving me a late first and an early second for Xavier Worthy. To me, it just felt like, hey, I'm going to re-roll the dice, get another young guy, get liquid, get some of these points off of my roster, and uh, just re-roll the dice. I, I mean, I, I liked Worthy, but not enough to 
you know, get two assets that could potentially be starting pieces for me down the road, or even use both of these pieces, a first and a second to go upgrade, you know, as we get closer to that rookie draft period, when these picks start to get more hype, these picks start to get more value, people get excited about them, maybe get a better player than what Xavier Worthy is. So that was the second trade that I made with this roster. Now, moving on to my third trade here, this is a trade that I made just a very small one. You have pieces like this that pop up on your dynasty roster all the time. You know, Trey Sermon, he found a period of time there in October where he had like two or three weeks where he was the starting running back for the Colts. Get me out, 25 third, you can have him, doesn't matter. In a 10 team league, like we're talking about like a top 25 pick, most likely in the rookie draft, maybe a top 30 pick in the rookie draft if it's the worst case scenario. Trey Sermon, to me, he is a nothing. Get those points off of my roster. Give me the third, I'll get liquid. You can buy a Trey Sermon type of player next year with this third round pick, or you can get a better player than what Trey Sermon is. So this is just another one. Again, the strategy of getting getting liquid, getting the draft capital, getting the points off of my roster and selling assets that I do not believe are going to hold long-term value or even benefit my roster, you know, past 2024. So just another deal that was pretty easy to make. Going on to my trade four, this is a pick your flavor type of trade. I felt like Khalil Shakir and Wondell Robinson were very similar assets. To me, I'm the one who sent this offer over. I love Khalil Shakir. I love what I've seen out of Khalil Shakir this year. And this was made before Amari Cooper was traded to the Buffalo Bills. So I felt like I was getting the number one wide receiver for uh, Josh Allen. Now, obviously, Amari Cooper goes there. It actually hasn't hurt Khalil Shakir. He's actually looked almost better at times with Amari Cooper opposite him. Uh, Wondell Robinson obviously been a good player. These are both young guys. It's just pick your flavor. I think Khalil Shakir, I'd rather have the higher paced offense with Josh Allen as the quarterback and a guy that I think can grow as a player. Wondell Robinson, I think we know what he is. Kind of a PPR beast. He's not going to do too much for your fantasy football teams as, as far as yardage goes, as far as touchdowns go. But this is just a second trade that I made and uh, I guess not a second trade this is the fourth trade that I made and Khalil Shakir was the guy that I really wanted uh, just wanted to buy him in a league and I, I got him here I think he has some longer term value than a guy like Wondell Robinson but Wondell is not a bad piece by any means moving on to my fifth trade here this is a bigger one and this is one of the ones where I, it really was okay we were making some small moves we were trying to get a little bit more liquid and now we really are going to push in the direction of blowing up this is one where I decided to take a lot of these older packaged pieces Mike Evans he had uh, not some suffered the hamstring injury yet. Amari Cooper had just been traded to the Buffalo Bills. Juju Smith-Schuster had just had that big game um, where he played in the slot before DeAndre Hopkins has been uh, traded over there. This was taking all of these pieces and moving it together for Chris Olave in a 26 first. Now to me, Chris Olave at the time, obviously right now he's dealing with a little bit more of the uh, concussion stuff. He's probably going to be on IR. He might miss the rest of the season, but that doesn't really matter to me actually in a rebuild because Chris Olave is going to be back next year. And that's when I'm actually looking to play. I'm trying to play in 2025 and 2026, not necessarily trying to play in 2024. So Chris Olave has now actually benefited me in a way because he is not going to be scoring points. It's going to better my draft pick to help me get one of those top three, top four draft picks here in the 2025 draft. And then I get the 26 first thrown on top. Uh, again, finding a league mate that wants to contend finding a league mate that wants points now was not happy with Chris Olave he had been shopping him a little bit over the last couple of weeks before this and Mike Evans had some big games things like that obviously you know I kind of dodged a bullet here because Evans has the injury and Juju kind of goes right back to zeros uh, as soon as this trade is done but this is uh this was right time right place and I felt like I got a lot of value again getting liquid and getting a younger piece that I felt like I could build around I would much rather have Chris Olave than Mike Evans and Amari Cooper long term on my rebuilding roster. Now going over to the sixth trade, again, this is that same manager. So the manager that buys Mike Evans and Amari Cooper from me, he wanted to buy T Higgins as well. I sold T Higgins. This is before T Higgins had that second stint of missing time. Again, dodging another bullet, but this is just moving the groove and man, keeping, uh, your team fluid, trying to find those trade partners, trying to find these trades, making sure you're capitalizing. And I, I went to go buy Rasheed Rice. I felt like moving off of Xavier Worthy, buying Rasheed Rice as the number one wide receiver in this offense. And this was shortly after the DeAndre Hopkins trade. So I felt like there might be a tiny bit of dip in perception as to what Rasheed Rice could be because the name DeAndre Hopkins maybe has a little bit of a ring to it where people are going to say, hey, maybe DeAndre Hopkins is the number one wide receiver next year instead of Rasheed Rice. I'm willing to gamble that bet. I trade T Higgins for Rashi. To me, very similar players. I think Rashi probably has the higher ceiling, but he's also benefiting me by scoring zeros in my lineup this year, being able to plug him in the IR, improve my draft pick. Really just all of that. Not losing value, but gaining value in my draft pick because it's helping me accomplish the goals. So that was the sixth trade that I made. Moving on to the seventh trade that I made, just trying to get rid of some of these running backs. I wanted to get rid of all of the running backs for the most part on my roster because one, because this is a very strong upcoming rookie running back class. I feel like there's going to be a lot of shakeups in 
the 2025 class when it comes to affecting these running back rooms in the NFL. Also, when you're rebuilding, having running backs on the roster is not beneficial to you at all, especially if the running backs are old. So I was willing to package Aaron Jones to go get two second round picks, one of them being 2025, the other being 2026. This was the best offer that I could get for Aaron Jones. He needed Demario Douglas in it to get it done. To me, throwing a guy like Demario Douglas in a 10-man league where at best, you know, he's a guy that I'm hoping he can fall into that wide receiver three spot consistently. Maybe he can't even do that. It, it's a piece that I'm willing to give up in order to get liquid and get this deal done. Um, try to get some first. There's not a lot of first at this point. Really, the first have consolidated to two teams, my team that is rebuilding and another rebuilding team. So there's two of us in this league uh, that are really hoarding a lot of the 2025 first and a lot of the 2026 first at this point now, too. So those firsts are getting slim. You kind of got to get a little bit liquid elsewhere, getting a couple seconds, especially in a strong running back class coming up. I'm OK taking that gamble. I'm not necessarily going to use these seconds uh, to draft and put players on my team, but just having them as assets that I can trade down the line or use is going to be a beneficial thing to me. So this is another one that I make maybe sold Aaron Jones just a tiny bit low uh, just in overall value. But two seconds, I'm, I'm willing to take that uh, as the best bet just to get the points off of my roster. Now going to trade a, a very similar deal as well. DeAndre Swift, same deal, two seconds, both of them being in 2025 this time. I needed to throw in a 2025 third to get this done. That third was a projected late one from another team. Both of these seconds are going to be early to mid. So I do get two early slash mid seconds in 2025 for DeAndre Swift. Again, strong running back class can re-roll the dice. If Swift is not the guy, you know, for me, maybe I get two guys that I can play there. Or maybe I get a guy that I can draft and trade the other second for a wide receiver that I can plug into my flex long term. That's kind of the same idea. Again, getting liquid moving the running backs off of my roster, trying to just get points off of my roster to improve my draft pick overall and, and just fix this roster without losing value long term, but having pieces on the roster that are not going to score me points. You guys kind of get the vibe of what I was trying to do here. Now, I got two more trades. Uh, one of them, I think, is a little bit of a larger trade and the other one's a smaller trade, but we'll talk about them. Uh, number nine, again, moving running backs, man. Moving Rashad White, moving Tyrone Tracy. Tyrone Tracy, a guy that I, I really liked in the pre-draft process. I think I drafted him with a fifth round pick in this league, so I basically got him for free man move him and white for stefan diggs and christian kirk these uh pieces are guys that i think are just the classic buy low uh sell high type of vibe you get stefan diggs he obviously was playing well he's a little bit older he has the acl tear christian kirk he has the broken uh collarbone he's gonna miss the rest of the year these guys are gonna score zero points again i, I don't I hate to beat a dead horse here and, and keep you know repeating the same thing but that is what i am doing in this rebuild i'm trying to buy zeros but players that i think i can buy and flip down the road when Diggs is a free agent this offseason maybe he re-signs with houston people are going to say all right well stefan Diggs, he's re-signing with houston you can go get a different piece maybe it's an early second maybe it's a late first next year uh, in 2026 when he's healthy and people want him on a contending roster christian kirk same thing probably the same type of value that i would get for rashad white or tyrone tracy but you're getting zeros and you get that down the road um Again, these firsts were taken, the seconds were taken. Not a lot of people were buying Rashad White. He doesn't have really a lot of name value right now. He's not a lot of positive uh, talk around Rashad White. Tyrone Tracy people like, but there just wasn't a lot of draft capital left to go after in this league because I own most of it. I am uh, I'm holding all of this hostage. So give me Stefan Diggs and Christian Kirk. They'll give me zeros and I can keep moving off of them. And then Tyrone Tracy, like I said, next year, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't happen. I don't want to gamble with running backs in a rebuild. Give me, you know, the pieces that have a little bit of a safer floor you know we're we're trading penny stocks for those blue chip stocks here in stefan diggs we know stefan diggs is good um so that's what i what i try to do there and then this last one get anybody off of my roster for anything i can get a, a 25 fifth i told you i drafted tyrone tracy in the fifth hey cam Akers. somebody had some value for him they liked him whatever it would be blah blah blah, blah. i'm gonna get him off the roster 25 fifth that's what it takes that's what it takes get him out of here um by all means necessary and i'm trying to do the same thing with guys like you know carson Steele and uh alexander Madison you know maybe not a fifth round pick for Alexander Madison but you get the vibe like these running backs are getting off of the roster so I want to pull up the team graphic one more time just to show you guys that I still am considering shopping right now uh Baker Mayfield I'm listening to offers we'll see what happens with that I don't mind keeping him on the roster by any means so you know unless I get a really good offer that comes over for him I I'm probably going to end up keeping him I'm listening to offers on Michael Pittman as well but again another player that I'm okay keeping uh 
I'm also listening to Brandon Ayuk, but he's kind of accomplishing a goal for me of being on IR, a good player that's going to score zero. So maybe he won't go. But when you're looking at this second uh, tab here, guys like Ty Chandler, I'm trying to get him off the roster. Amari DiMercato, trying to get him off the roster. Alexander Madison, Rashad White, those guys uh, off the roster. I actually, we traded Rashad White already, but you get the vibe there. And then uh, guys like Van Jefferson, um, even like a Pat Fryermuth, I'd listen as well. But just trying to get liquid, man. Trying to get these guys off the roster that I don't see long-term, you know, value out of. And trying to get assets that I think are only going to increase in value over time. And hopefully accomplish the goal of scoring zero points uh, right now to improve my draft pick in 2025. Because getting a top three pick, maybe being able to grab an Ashton GNT. Or using the perception of drafting, you know, Ashton GNT and selling that to somebody who really wants a running back. And getting a good wide receiver out of that or something like that. You get the vibe. Like, this is what I'm trying to do, man. Maybe you guys like this video. Maybe you don't um, at the end of the day You know, I just felt like I wanted to make this one I wanted to talk about this team I felt like I've been making a ton of moves in there and felt like maybe you guys wanted to see how I operate in my own Rebuilding process Maybe you guys are gonna get inspiration from this and start making some trades for yourself as the trade deadline approaches in your dynasty fantasy football leagues um, But if you did enjoy the video, you know, do me the favor hit the like button hit the subscribe button Also, if you enjoyed this type of video, maybe I'll do some more for some other teams that I have in dynasty leagues uh, when things like this happens just let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the video uh that is the best way to to let me know that you like it so yeah something fun man hopefully you liked it join the discord all those things considered i have nothing else for you today i will see you on our next one till then peace out